you guys know that we're called the Hex Project because of these cool ties that we send out. I know some of you have even made them. Uh, it's a strip of cloth. It's got some crystals, magic crystals inside that when you soak in water, swell up 400 times their weight in water, and they hang it around their neck over the carotid <coughs> artery, and it can reduce their body temperature five or six degrees, which may just be enough to keep them from dying of heat stroke. That's the goal. Hugs has evolved to be anything that improves their morale, um, that changes uh, their standard of living, brings it up a little bit. I know some of you have made the board games. They're bored. They're you know between missions, they're tired, but they need something to occupy their mind. They can't sleep the whole time. And there's some one guy wrote. He said, "Retired poker. What, do you, what else you got? You know." So we send them sequence games, man, call board games that we make um, very inexpensively. You can buy the. The man call a game for about $10. It's the cheapest I've ever seen it. We make it for less than a penny. So we can make a lot of those if we have enough hands doing that. <coughs> um, some of the other things that we send, well, first let me show you how the guys live in, and then I'll tell you some of what we make sure they have. And I know this is a repeat for some of you, but it won't be for some of the rest of you. Let me start that picture going. And let's start this one here. I guess the first one I'll tell you, well, here's a young man wearing a hug around his neck. If anybody hasn't seen that and would like to, uh, I'll, I'll just lay that here. You can come see it afterwards or if you don't pass it around. This, there's a couple of pictures I really want to make sure you see. And I should have made more copies, but this is a young Marine. And when I saw it, it was a picture about an inch by two square in a newspaper. And I couldn't tell what I was looking at. Probably like you can't tell from there what you're looking at. I had a hard time figuring out what was his head. Okay, so let's pass this one around. His head is bent over. He's standing like this. And he's trying to get the weight off of his back and his shoulders because this is a 145-pound Marine. And if you total up what he's carrying, he's got a 15-pound mortar plate, four 10-pound mortar shells. He has uh, 50 pounds of gear, which includes his gun, his Kevlar helmet and vest, his personal items. And then he's got 15 pounds of water. Now he's supposed to chug 18 pounds of water a day. He's supposed to chug three gallons a day. Is that? No, 24 pounds. And uh, he can't carry all he needs. So he's, he's not going to have enough water to get through the day. It's 120 degrees the day that the reporter was walking with him and took that picture. Well, in the story, it talks about this. Uh, this group of young men uh, humping down in the southern Afghanistan. And the reporter said, I didn't want to intrude, but I waited until they took a break for the day, and they actually got to take their packs off and sit there in a security area and rest. And he said, I just walked around, and I wanted to hear what they had to say to each other. So he's listening to them talk among themselves, and one of them pokes his buddy, and he said, hey, man, do you know what today is? And his buddy said, well, yeah, it's winter. Third. No, I, I don't know what day it is. He said, no, man, I mean, do you know what today is? Today's 4th of July. And while we're out here doing this, our buddies are back home. And they're having a barbecue, and they're going to the lake water skiing. They're having fun, man. They've got a nice cold drink with some ice in it. Man, they're having fun. And we're out here doing this so they can celebrate freedom. And his buddy said, yeah. And that's not a bad thing. Nothing selfish about our men when they're out there. They, every single man or woman that's in today's military has volunteered to be there. They've either upped, I don't guess, they, they've either enlisted or they've re-upped, knowing that more than likely they were going to send to war. And they did it anyway. And they did it for me. And they did it for each one of you. And I know you believe that. And I'll be darned if I can figure out why. You know, what makes a man with, or a woman with so much courage that they're willing to lay their life on the line for me? They do it for, well, I got a letter last week. It kind of explains it. And this young man had attached his signature line. And it was a line from, uh, I think it's G.W. Chesterton. Are you Marine? Where are you, Marine? Right here. All right. Is it G.W. Chesterton? G.K. G.K.? Is that Chesty, I'm assuming? Chesty Chesterton. Um, and he said, you don't fight a war, 
because of who's in front of you. You, if you don't fight a war because you hate the people in front of you. You fight the war because you love the people behind you. It feels really good to be the people behind them. And we love them every bit as much as they love us. Um, when they got to their luxury accommodations in the southern Kelman province, they were told, get a shovel and dig in. This is where you'll be staying. And so they dug foxholes, just like in the old days. You guys, some of you have done that. And uh, they were told, you know, get down to the low ground. Now, <coughs> some of them couldn't get very far. That one guy on the far right, he's barely below the ground. He's barely, barely legal, but he's hooked out. And then the one that really gets me is the guy square in the center because he's laying there and he's all wrapped up in an army blanket. He's so cold. <coughs> but his little bare feet are hanging out. <laughs> and the reason his feet are hanging out, you know, he wants his socks to dry out. You can't hardly see his socks because they're so nasty brown. They, they match the dirt real well. He's worn those socks for weeks. And he's going to put them on in the morning, and he's going to wear them some more weeks until probably they fall off his feet, the sand gets in there and cuts the fiber, and he's walking on holes so bad that somebody takes pity on him, and you know, hopefully they open that care package and right there on top is a brand new pair of socks. And, and every box we send out has socks, it has food, it has toothbrush and toothpaste. These guys are living on a base where there is no PX, there's no BX, there's no mall. Uh, there's no place to buy those luxury items that we all like, like toothpaste, toothbrush, and socks. So they're hoping that care package has those things enclosed. And that's one of the things we try to do for them. We send other things. We send a lot of things that you wouldn't think of. This says Girl Scout cookies on the outside, but obviously it's not Girl Scout cookies. It's just one example of how I say we don't waste things. We could go out and buy a container to put this item that's inside here in, but why do that when you can cut the flaps off of it, cut it down and put two, you know, make two little containers. We had a young man that wrote a couple weeks ago, wrote the best thank you note I've ever gotten. Well, he started out pretty lame. I mean, he started out just saying, hey, thanks for the care package. We appreciate it. You know, appreciate it. And, and I wasn't ready to let him go. I just felt like he had more to say. And I said, well, what was your favorite thing in the box? And that's when he got poetic. And he wrote the best letter I've ever read. He said, we found a little packet inside. And when we found it, time stood still. Anybody want to take a guess? And you can't guess because you know. Anybody want to take a guess what's inside this little packet? There's five heads of Oklahoma wheat. And he said... We have boonie hats on, you know, those floppy hats. And he said, we have a little headband, and we stuck the heads of wheat in our boonie hats, and we were dancing. <laughs> and he said, if you could have seen our eyes, you would have known that for a moment we were back at home. That's our goal. <laughs> that was good to know. But he said, um, uh, we feel your love, and it's like a clean glass of cold water. I love that, man. I love that. He said, when it's 114 degrees in the shade, the smallest things are what rock your world. Yeah. And then he said, um, and I had written him, and I said, you know, thank you for going over there and looking evil in the eye for me. And he said, Karen, nothing's going to happen to you. Not on my watch. <coughs> So, um, one of the new things that we're sending out, um, I'm not sure how much longer I have to talk, so I'm going to run through some stuff real pretty quick, but let me send these around. This is a picture of what packing all those packages looks like at Crossroads over several years' time. Uh, the one I really want you to look at is down in the bottom right-hand corner, I think it's got, it's kind of brown looking, and it's just showing all those open boxes. When we pack 4,000 boxes, we don't immediately seal them up because we're packing through the whole month of November. So we'll pack the box, we'll set it there open, and then the last week, the last few days before we put the postage on, we're going to put in homemade cookies and candy. So we'll leave that box open so that's nice and fresh. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of what packing packages looks like. And uh, I want to show you a couple more. This is a, an MRAP vehicle. Um, if you guys don't know very much about MRAPs, uh, instead of being a flat bottom, that absorbs the blast of the IED. It's built like the hull of a ship. And so if they hit an IED, hopefully it's going to deflect that blast up and away from them. That's
that's a member's son's vehicle, and it shows what it looked like when it went out and then what it looked like after it hit the IED. All the young men that were in that vehicle walked away. Um, or they may have been on a stretcher, but they, they only had broken bones and they only had no broken noses. So nothing life-threatening or, or real severe. The reason I love that package is you can see when they righted the vehicle, how everything poured out through the open hatch. And you see how the, the guys are living. Uh, hand, me, hand me my Kleenex. I'm here from up here. I get emotional. Anyway, um, you see how they're living. They're living like little homeless guys. They've got boxes and, and bags and stuff. And at right square in front, you'll see a brand new white shiny care package. That's our box that we sent. And he wrote his mom, he said, we picked up that care package three hours before we hit the IED. And he said, uh, thank you, Ken. He said, um, when I, I went, hey, let's open it. Everybody went, no, no, no. Let's make it last. Let's think about what they might have put inside. And so for three hours, they're going, well, do you think they sent us homemade cookies? I don't know. You think maybe Joe got a big pair of nail clippers because he's got that hangnail, you know, they're guessing about what's in the box for forever. And I kind of would have wondered about that story, except not too long ago we're packing boxes and we had a, it was, is Boog a lieutenant commander or commander or something? It was like one of the highest ranking uh, tinker Navy guys and he was getting ready to retire and he was there with his Boy Scout troop working with us. And he was sitting there and I heard him talking to a bunch of teenagers. And they, one of them was inhaling a uh, little thing of chips, you know, potato chips. And Boog said, uh, you're eating those kind of fast. And the kids said, well, yeah, I'm hungry. He said, do you know how long you can make a bag of potato chips last at that size? And the kids said, well, about a minute. He said, no, no, no. You can make that last two days if you work at it. And the kids said, well, why would I want to do that? He said, when you're on a ship and you know you're not getting any more potato chips, well, first you pull it out and look at it because it's so pretty. <laughs> And then you lick the salt off of it. <laughs> and you sit it down so you look at it some more. And then you eat a little bit, you know. And he described making this bag of potato chips last for two days. And these kids couldn't believe it. But you know how hungry you are all the time? These are 18, 19 year old boys, or men. I, I always had to take a call them boys because if they're willing to give their life for me, they deserve my respect. They are men and women. They're always hungry. So. You know, MRAs are great, right? They taste really good. <laughs> but what's your favorite restaurant? Visualize your favorite restaurant in the whole world. Do you want to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner there tomorrow? And tomorrow? And tomorrow? And next week? And next month? No, you want some variety. So when they opened up, what, this kid that came to the mall right before we left this evening, and he was telling us his grandma sent him a box of Oreos, you know, and he, he described somebody else had some some uh, marshmallow fluff, and they were trading stuff. And you, he laughs every time I tell these stories because he knows. But um, the variety is what really gets them, the variety of the boxes and how much is available to them that they're not going to get otherwise.